in Redstone in the far reaches of Picton County to celebrate the opening of a new park. Where I'm standing used to be a train depot back at the turn of the century. Brought dignitaries up here to this coal mining community to visit the Osgoods at the Osgood Castle. The park is located right across the street from the Coke ovens. And behind me is this wonderful new structure that was designed to look like a train depot, even though no train comes here anymore. But it's a wonderful open structure that is the centerpiece of this great park that Picton County Open Space and Trails and partners were able to create over the course of the last few years. We've celebrated today with a ribbon cutting. The park includes some beautiful uh, benches, contemplative areas that overlook the river, and just some wide open fields. Another really neat thing about this park is it has a bridge that connects it to the town of Redstone and a lot of ample parking along Highway 133 so that we can get people out of their cars across the bridge and walking through the streets of Redstone instead of driving. So it's really, really an exciting new addition to this wonderful little mining community. Thank you all for coming today. This is a great turnout. It's awful, it's a beautiful day in Elk Park. So. Here you go. This is Elk Park. This is the dream come true. So everyone, <laughs> Most of you know me. I'm Gary Tenenbaum with Pickens County Open Space and Trails. And this has been a long journey with the community, the county, the scenic byway, consultants, and you name it to get to this point. Um, you know, honestly, at this point, I'm kind of proud to see how the community vision is now into this incredible structure and incredible park. It's not a pond anymore, it's a park. <laughs> and the reality is, is this has been a long trip that we've taken together. Starting in about 2009, we started a really long process to work with the community and sit down. Because when I first got here, in 2002, we had some problems over there at the bathroom, if everyone remembers. Party gate. <laughs> and exactly. It's, we, we, we didn't get off on the right foot together. And so we did have some issues going forward. And as a community, I just, we didn't really know each other. And it was really fun to be able to sit down and get a steering committee together. And I would love people to raise their hands who are on this steering committee. Could people do that? Come on. Yes, cool, thank you. Because you guys came together and you guys dedicated a lot of time. It was, we did, what, 12 meetings over about 13 months. You came together once or twice a month if needed to come meet me at the church. And I thank the church for allowing us to meet there. And really, truly, we came up, we asked you, what would you like to see as a community? And you guys responded in such a positive way that we all of a sudden kind of got the scenic byway to find some money from the other side of McClure Pass, and they brought it over to this side of McClure Pass. Only half of what you needed. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I'll let Dorothea talk about that because she was instrumental. But to me, I really thank the community and they thank the community members. I also want to thank, you know, the Pickin County Commissioners and our Open Space Board, you know, they are really the ones that helped push this over the top with the additional funding necessary. So I really want to thank them. And we got three of them up here. And, you know, this, this beautiful building, you know, we, I got to give Danny Muse, he's here. Raise your hand, Danny. Where are you? are back there. Oh, he's eating. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Danny was the architect on this and listened to the community, but I don't know how many people really knew what this would turn out to be. So I really thank you, Danny, for listening to the community and coming up with this. Uh, we have uh, Blue Green was our consultant on the landscaping, and Ryan Bugveen is here today. He's not with Blue Green anymore, but I really am happy that you came. Thank you very much, Ryan. <laughs> These great interpretive panels were designed by Julie Kolar and she worked with the community to come up with the content because it's not easy to just all of a sudden do that and be able to take what everybody wants to say and put it on really cool plaques. So thank you, Julie. Good job, Julie. So, 
You know, we have, so I'm the one standing here for staff, but we have Director Dale here, but we also have other staff and that have been critical to make this happen. I want to thank Lindsay. She's going to turn red right now. But <laughs> hey, Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay really stepped in and took not only the community vision, but then worked with our contractors to actually make this happen. So thank you, Lindsay. And uh, our contractors, I don't know if we have Western states here, but I know we have Hudspit who built this beautiful building. So thank you guys. This is an incredible job. And I want to thank CDOT too, even though, you know, they, it's tough. And I don't know if we have anyone from CDOT here, but who's from CDOT? All right, well, thank you. Because in the end, they ended up helping us with the extensions of making this funding last from 2008 to 2015. So we do thank them too. Um, let me think, did I forget anyone? I don't think so. So I really want to turn it over to other people to talk. I, I'm just, I'm really proud of what we have accomplished and I really thank you all. <laughs> and I hope this is a magnet to get people off this highway and to visit Redstone and to know about the incredible historical and recreational opportunities. So thank you all. And I turn it over to George. Thanks, Gary. Well, with all, all successful projects, it all begins with a vision, a vision and leadership. And I certainly can't take credit for it, but my predecessors certainly can, mm -hmm. Dorothy being one of them. Because as some of you know, at one point, the, uh, the plan for this area was a strip mall. And when the county heard about that and the county commissioners at that time, they decided that really wasn't going to work. And so, okay. so they, they went ahead and purchased this property to protect it from being developed. And that set the stage that many years ago to where we are today. And I think as with all of our open space and trails uh, projects that, and acquisitions, the management plan speaks for itself in terms of the partnership and the collaboration that it takes to make these projects a success as they are. So I really have to credit certainly all the community members that have been involved, open space and trails staff, certainly Gary in particular, who uh, went above and beyond uh, working with the community through all these meetings. The Scenic Byways that was, a, was a critical partner in terms of using their funds to really get this off the ground. And so now we've got this beautiful Elk Park, a kiosk on this side. Uh, years ago, we were able successfully to restore the Coke ovens. And this is going to be such a great amenity to the uh, village of Redstone as, a, as part of the Scenic Byway as a place for, to capture and uh, create the interest and excitement to explore this area, learn more about the history, and take part of what is, is really a, a, a national treasury, the village of Redstone. So thank you all for all your help in making this successful. Well, now, I'd like one of those community members to talk. He's shy around the camera which is shocking to me but it's he he's got some great history some great photos hopefully you've seen these photos but bob can you sure uh <laughs> in about 1950 this became a pretty good sized industrial site and in when i moved here in seven in march of 74 it was a auto repair shop and there were quite a few pretty nice Porsches that were parked around here for <laughs> some of them for 15, 20 years. But after that, it became a construction yard, and I have some pictures of the construction yard. And uh, the gentleman who owned it, he put a plan before Picking County to put a strip mall here. And at the time, it was a, not a bad argument that the strip mall would be better than what was here then, the construction yard, because it was oil drums old oil tanks it was not a very pretty site so in 1993 the county commissioners actually bought this without open space the open space wasn't here they took it out of their general fund and bought this property and that was a you know just one of those things that you just go oh my gosh how does this how did that happen it was this foresight and uh i think we paid for, and, we paid for half of it about a third, did you? A third, of, third it. of it yeah. okay and uh at that time, it was, uh, we weren't sure where the fire department was going to be, so there was going to be a fi maybe a fire station here. There was, you know, we were trying to keep it open as a planning thing. 
but the fire department decided that they could do what they could do on their current site down by the water treatment plant. And uh, so it sat as a, as a, as a field, as an entrance to Redstone, which was much better than the construction site it was. But a, a few years back when the open space people came to the town and got us together as a committee, I'm surprised it was only 13 months that we got together. I've been on committees here in this town for 10 years. And, <laughs> and we've, yeah, we've had 10 years of committee meetings and we never got anything built. So I just want to say thank Gary and Lindsay. You guys were amazing in those meetings, keeping us focused, keeping us moving along. It was just one of the most enjoyable experiences, the most enjoyable committees I've ever been on. And, it, and we actually got something done. And I want to thank uh, Danny and Ashley Muse for their work here. They, they listened to what we all said, and then they would come back with these plans, and we would go, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I can't believe that all of these people put in their ideas, and, and look what came of it. And it's just unbelievable. And uh, Brian and Blue Green, same thing. We had all these plans. We had, everybody had all these ideas. And, and then they would come back with this plan, and we'd go, oh, I can't believe this is actually ha going to happen. And here it is. Thank you to the Board of County Commissioners for making this happen in the end because that's what it took. And everybody at uh, the Open Space Trails, great job. I mean, this is just a culmination. You come up Valley right now, and anybody who drove up Valley today has to be really glad they live in this valley or have something to do with this valley because, oh my God. There is nothing as beautiful as this valley, and maybe in the entire world. So to have this building here, when you come up now to see it, it deserves to be here. And it's, it's a thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you all. Thanks, Bob. And I do have someone from the byway. Um, she's more than the byway. <laughs> but she, it's Dorothea Ferris. I really thank you because you, you, you don't mind I live in Redstone, but you kind of pushed these things through and you gave, got us, figured out a way to get this funding over to us. So I thank you, but if you want to say anything, I'm sure you do. Just a couple minutes as I stand here. In 1961, I was teaching school in Carbondale, and Doug, was, my husband, was delivering timbers to Mid-Continent coal mine. So we came through Redstone, and I remember a variety of things that got us here today. I remember Mark Fuller. Mark Fuller and I were reviewing this property in about 90 or something and got chased off the property um, <laughs> for saying it wasn't exactly what the county thought was good. And since then, you look at the coke ovens, which have been refurbished. You grow a coal basin, and it's a healthy environment where the stream is getting better and getting even better with the cooperation that's going on. We have a bridge to cross the river. Uh, this parking area will take many of the cars off the boulevard. And this building does not look as if it's been designed by a committee. It's just fantastic <laughs> to serve all the needs it has to serve here. And, you know, th this puts makes me laugh when you think it takes a village. It takes way more than that. And I walked into one meeting, which is one of the reasons this is here, um, to Gary's pleasure and pain, so walked into a meeting and there was supposed to be a building to be built, Paonia, and they were saying, well, you know, they're not done, the developer pulled out, we can't take the money, so we want to return it. They're on the phone. I said, you're returning money to the feds? <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> and so I made one call to open space and I'm trying to remember who answered the phone. It might have been me, and I almost always say yes. So. <laughs> and I said, do you have the opportunity to get this money? Do you have $35,000 as matching funds? And it was the gal who used to be there with great hair. Oh, Barb. Barb. Oh, Barb. And Barb said, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll find it. I hung up, got on the other line, and said, we'll take it instead. And the board said, sure, why not? So that began a project that took six years to get all the approvals and do all the work that everybody in this room has to be commended for. It's not easy. It takes 40, 50 years sometimes to get something done. <laughs> Put a dream down and then you have to start working on all those components. So 
months. Dave was there at the very beginning of this whole project with, with open space and it's just, it's been a community project that makes all of us very proud. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now comes the fun part is the, let's cut this ribbon and let's open this and eat the rest of that food and mingle and really enjoy what this was supposed to be. It was a community gathering place. So anyone who wants to come up and hold this thing with us, please do because this is a community. Yeah, one, two, three. Woo!